Hello, everybody. Welcome to our channel. If you haven't been here before and welcome back. If you have, I've got my live chat on. Hi, Liz. Um, hi, Susie. I love it. Every time Susie says hello from the North, that's all you have to say. That's it. Just, we know who it is. Hey, Jerry. Um, so yeah, if you're watching the replay, be sure to turn on live chat so you can see the comments because this is a, originally a live video. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Jonna. Hey, Jen. Hey, Chow. Is your, is, is um, the test over, Chow? Can you guys hear me okay? I guess I want to ask that. I changed some settings um, that Elizabeth had given me, so I would like to know if you guys can hear me okay. Is there any popping or cracking or anything like that? Hey, Melissa. I don't hear Perfect. I'm going to be playing on my laptop. So, okay, Jerry, thank you. Um, I'm going to flip my camera around here. Let's see, flip camera. Don't know how. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi. Okay. I'm looking over here because that's where my phone is with the comments. Although, oh wait, I can put comments up here. I just remembered that. Hi, Christine. I'm waiting for comments to pop up on my screen. All right, well, let's get, get to it because I don't know how long. I mean, I know how long I have. I've only got about an hour, so I'm hoping that I can get through this pretty quick. Um, let me turn off my volume over here. I just wanted to make sure you guys could hear me. Uh, somebody comment so I can see if my comments are working on my screen, so I don't have to keep looking over there. Um, so what I'm going to show you guys is I found – we've had a lot of – rewind. Foiling Snobs Club. So on Facebook, we have a group called Foiling Snobs Club, which is um, created by Nancy Stamps and Tracy Schultz. So we have a bunch of people in there who do all kinds of crafting. We love foiling, hot foiling, toner foiling, and I'm looking for the comment to pop up on my screen. And no, it's not popping up, so let's turn that. Okay. So I... Yeah, I'm not getting comments on my screen for some reason. That's annoying. Because I'm pretty sure the chat is supposed to be here. Oh, I'm going to have to. Hey, Sherry. I'm going to have to keep looking over there. Sorry. So we have the Foiling Snobs Club. And we have a lot of questions about people wanting to download or where they can find images that they can download and they can use on their own. Um, you can buy a CBS uh, Create and Vision Stamps who is retired now. They used to sell what's called foilables and it was printed images um, on white paper, nice like glossy paper. Um, and then we would, we would uh, foil those. So I find that it's a little bit more cost effective. There's a little bit of a startup cost with doing your own right off the bat, but you can definitely, you know, after the initial setup cost of buying your own laser printer, buying some paper supplies and stuff like that, you can pretty much start printing um, your own pretty uh, reasonably priced. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys. And I apologize. 
For some reason, Streamlabs isn't showing me comments on my phone here, so I'm going to have to look over there for comments. So if you see me looking over there, that's fine. All right, so I wanted to show you guys um, how to do it. So I found an Etsy site that there's been a lot of foil art that has been out recently, and there is definitely, I mean, you can buy it so cheap. I mean, it's like to buy a digital image and then print it and foil it yourself. It's so inexpensive. It's so much more cost effective. And so there's a site that I found that is very close. Oh, it's got the images basically that I saw. You can go buy the actual foil art or foilables. And I'm like, heck, I'm not going to spend, you know, however much. I don't even know how much it was, but it was way more than it would cost me to do it myself. So I'm going to show you guys the site. And then after this live, I will add some links. And then also, um, if Elizabeth, I still have the popping, really? Hmm. Well, that sucks. Hopefully it's not too annoying. But thank you, Elizabeth. But Liz, will you please link your Etsy shop as well? Because Elizabeth, who is one of our moderators in the Foiling Snobs Club, has her own Etsy shop and she does her own digital images and she cuts she creates them from scratch most of, i think all of them she just she's an awesome awesome digital designer uh, she actually did the logo that you saw at the very beginning so if you need a logo done reach out to her she's amazing um i think it's craft with sassy but i'm not 100 percent sure uh what her etsy shop is but she will link it in the chat and thanks guys i'm glad you can deal with the popping <laughs> Um, but let's get started. So I'll show you the Etsy shop. Unfortunately, I don't think I have, um, if Etsy, if, um, Liz wants to send me a message with her, her, um, link, I can actually open it up and show you guys her site because I haven't been to it because we usually get like special stuff sent directly to us. So <laughs> we get like before it goes live kind of thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip my camera around and then we are going to, you're going to be looking at my computer screen for a little bit because this is how it starts. All right. So I'm going to go to the internet and I was shopping for paper. Um, so I can show you guys later what kind of paper we use. So there's some, some of those are open. But the Etsy shop that I found that has a bunch of different um, digital papers, clip art, vectors, and illustrations, as they call it here, there's a bunch that you can, mostly what you're going to want is something that's like patterned. So even the silhouettes, the silhouette here, silhouettes here, silhouettes here, let me zoom in a little bit and move over. Let's see if my mouse, we're going to go to this. We'll just open this. So the silhouettes, you get $1.95 for all of these silhouettes. And these would be perfect for foiling. Something like this would be wonderful for foiling. So I'm going to go back. And then we have, let's see, just you can just scroll through here. There's a lot of different stuff. These would be awesome right here. Um, again, silhouettes are great for foiling. These animal prints would be good. Just kind of stay away for something that's got grays in it because you want something that's going to be black and white or something you can change to black and white. If you guys have questions, make sure you ask them in the chat, please. And admins, if you guys have anything you need me to address, go ahead and send me a message. I'm totally fine with that. Thank you. I'm just scrolling through here. Okay, so here's one, this damask one. I actually purchased this one. So this one is very pretty, very true black and white. Um, if you have, you may have issues with your system, um, printing and or foiling really fine lines. So if you do, I don't, but if you do, then, you know, try and avoid that stuff. But these are all very nice, big, bold lines, black and white. This is, this was perfect. So I actually purchased this one 
and it was only $2.97. And you get, let me see if it has, I don't know if it tells me, 12. You get 12 black and white damask digital papers. And I believe they're 12 by 12, which is fantastic because if you wanted to print 12 by 12, I don't even think you could because, you know, who has a printer that prints 12 by 12. But you don't have to then um, match up like multiply the design to fill a paper or you don't have to expand it so that it goes, you know, um, kind of gets distorted. It's just much better if you use larger than what you need, because then you can print just what you need. It's, it's just going to be a lot better. So this is one of the ones I purchased already. And then another one that I purchased was also, let me see here. Here's my downloads. So I got the black damask one. And then I also got these retro backgrounds. So these are, there's 20 of these. And this one looks very familiar. I've seen this one around recently. And when I purchased it, I actually don't think I paid $3.60. I think it, and there's a 40% off right here. Or sorry, 10% off too. But I think it was a little bit less. I think it was like $2.67 when I purchased this one. So you get 12 by 12 patterns and you get 20 different digital papers. It's crazy. All right, so that's the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to go here. This is just an Etsy shop. And give me just a second. I wish I could shut my video off for a brief moment, but I guess I'm gonna just put my hand over it. Um, Cause I don't know, I wanna get. All right, so here's the Etsy shop. So it is Chat with Sassy. And these are all the images and digital designs that Elizabeth has out there. And so let me, why is my scroll like wonky? It won't let me go. Oh, okay. Because that is, that's the full page. And I apologize for my sniffles. I've already taken a Benadryl, so I'm doing what I can. Um, okay. So, oh, that is awesome. I love that snowflake background. And look, there's a set of 10. So you go through here and you've got all of these to choose from. She has them all in black and whites and some grays, but not really. Um, and I like, like I was, I got this one. And what I did then was I made my own snowflake background and I just resized them and put them and you can do this through Inkscape very easily and you can um, resize them and put them, you know, all over a background and have a bunch of different snowflakes and then you can print it and foil it. So that's awesome. And she's got some awesome leaves. Those are so cool. Skeleton leaves. She's got the solid. She's got the um, fine detail. Very cool. Two squarely frames with open design. Awesome. So I love these. So I already downloaded my, the files that I purchased. And so, and nice enough, they actually gave me some freebies when I, um, in my downloads, they gave me some links to some freebies. So I saved those here too, but these are all the files that came in. So if you look here, this actually is a JPEG file. They're all JPEGs. Sometimes they're PNGs. Sometimes they are, oh, okay. They're all black and white on Elizabeth's page and um, the gray is the watermark. Okay. Thank you. That's good to know. Cause you definitely want black and white on your, uh, your images that you're going to print, but you can change it. If you go through Inkscape, you can actually change it to black and white and you can do this with any image. So just keep that in mind as well. But this is the file I've already extracted. So here's the zip file. So this is the black and white patterns, retro edition. So this is what you're going to download. So when you go to the Etsy shop, let me go back. This is my download. So you get, once you purchase it, you're going to get an email. So then you're going to go to your email and you're going to get a link. And the link is going to take you then to the downloads on your, in your Etsy shop. And so you're just going to scroll down and here's the little freebies. Show a little love and appreciation. Here's some freebies, but you're going to go down here and then you can download them straight from here. And so when you click this, depending on how your system's set up, I am using a PC. So depending on how your system's set up, when I click this, it I have it ask me where to save it. Sometimes it'll automatically save to your download. So just keep that in mind as well. But I've already downloaded them 
and they are in those files, that folder that I was showing you. So you're going to have a zip file. So this is a zip file because it's got a big old zipper on it. So what you're going to do here then is you're going to right mouse click and you're going to do extract all, or if you have the seven zip, which is a free file online, and it's a great file for if you unzip a lot of stuff, you can do it all at once. But otherwise, this is the one that's usually built into um, Windows. And so you do extract all, and then it's going to ask you where you want to save it. And typically it's the exact same folder that you're already in. So I usually just hit um, extract. And then if you want it to show the extracted files, so if I extract it after it's done, if I click this, then it'll pop up the window with those files. So if you don't want to have to go hunting for them, just click that. It makes the, your life easier. But I already have the window open, so and they're already been extracted. And so this is the ones that are in here. That, that one had 20. So these are all the retro designs that I, I have. Now, this first JPEG is actually like, it shows all of them. Hi. So it just shows you, it actually, it just shows you the cover page. So these are all the different ones that are included in this. Now, if I scroll, it's going to go to the next document, the next one, which is retro pattern number one. So the document name is up here. And so literally I can use my arrows and go left and right. And it's just going to go through. That looks like eyeballs, a little creepy, but okay. <laughs> So we can go through and we can see all the different designs. Ooh, that one's very cool. I like that one. But we can see all the different designs. That one's cool because it's that and then it's the obverse where it's got the, the black more than the white. And then we have, ooh, I like that one. That's cool. These are all the ones that are in that retro pack. And I literally, oh, okay. So that was them in the retro pack. This is the last one. This is number 20. And then I'm going into now, this is the damask pack that I got. And so this is the black and white damask. And so there's all kinds of different damask designs. I love damask. Paisley, damask. Those are my two favorites right there. I guess I got to go back and look for a paisley. Oh, crap. Anyway, so that's it for that one because you only got 12 for this one. But those are all pretty cool. And that's pretty neat. That would be a nice layer for your damask designs. All right. So Elizabeth was commenting in the chat that the FSC has the leaves for, for personal use only in the, F in the files tab. So in the FSC group in Facebook, the Foiling Snobs Club group, we do have um, some files that we do share. And it is only if it is custom made. Um, it has to be custom made. It can't be something that, you know, like I couldn't share these files in the FSC. Um, we would want you to go and, part, you know, go and buy it from the Etsy creator themselves. Um, but we do have people who create stuff on their own, like Elizabeth, and they like to share them in our group. And that's the only way that you can get them is in through our group. So if you're not, if you're not part of the group, then definitely um, go check it out. And they're linking the they're putting the link in the chat and then I will also put a link in the description after the video is done okay so we will go ahead and I'm gonna note which one so this is number nine I'm gonna write down that so I want number nine do you guys have any that you saw that were amazing <laughs> any special requests that one's kind of cool let's do number six I'm writing these down because I'm going to have to leave this view and then go into the actual folder and then we'll do 15. I think I need one more because I've got about four different papers. Damask. Oh, you want me to do Damask? Okay. Um, okay. So that's number one, two, three, four, five. We're going to skip the stripes. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's it. So you got any of that? Give me a number if you want me to pick one. Otherwise, I'm going to pick one. Um, okay, so Susie 
help when I download an image of my phone. It shows, hey, Eager Crafter. Um, it shows in black. Is there a setting I need to change? I'm not sure how it's going to look on your phone. I would highly recommend looking at these on your computer. Um, I have no idea what your settings on your phone would be. All right. So this is, I'm going to go backwards because I gave you guys different numbers. Three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's the one you want, right? Somebody was saying 10. Okay, so we're going to do Damask 10. Okay, so I'm going to close this window because that was my viewing window. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys how to do it in Word first time, but then I'm going to go and I'm going to show you how to do it in Inkscape as well because the way in Word is not as easy as the way in Inkscape as far as I'm concerned, but I do know that some people don't have Inkscape, even though Inkscape is a free um, program that you can download and it's somewhat easy to learn uh, and it's great for using with SVGs and manipulating files and, and you know images and stuff like that and pr for printing um, and foiling. So I highly recommend if you haven't played with Inkscape to give it a try, but I'm going to... Go to Word, so I'm gonna open Word. So this is just Microsoft Word. And so I'm gonna to go to a blank document. And now the whole idea of what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill this whole document with the image. And we're just gonna print out an eight by 10, or eight and a half by 11, excuse me, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with the image. Because then what we can do is we can cut it down and use it for card panels. We can die cut out of it. We can do all kinds of stuff with it after, you know, we print it. You can also cut your paper down ahead of time and then change your paper size in the application you're using. I've done that as well, where I've already cut something down to, um, you know, card front size. And I'm just going to put that through my printer. As long as your printer will allow it, which most do, um, like, you know, a normal card front size, most will accept that the four and a half by, or four and a quarter by five and a half or Five and a half by four and a quarter, however we want to say it. But what we're going to do here, though, is Word gives us, it forces this into um, margins that we don't necessarily want. So I'm going to make these margins as small as possible. And I'm going to go to Layout and Margins. Let me get that in the screen. Sorry about that. So you're going to go to Layout right here, Layout, and then Margins. And I'm also going to, my intent is to create an instructional video that's very much more, you know, dialed in to show you guys these steps. But you can always go back and watch this and take notes. We're going to go to custom margins because none of these give me, oh, well, actually, this last custom margin is exactly what I want, but I'll show you how to do it because this is only here because I already did it. But you're going to go to custom margins. And you're going to literally come in here and you're going to tell it, I want my margins to be zero. I want no margins. And so you're going to hit zero, tab, zero, tab. And then the gutter position is going to be zero. So everything for your margins, top, left, top, bottom, left, and right should all be zero. You're going to hit OK. It's going to give you an error message basically saying, are you sure? Because this is outside my printable area. Printable area is basically going to be like a quarter of an inch around the whole entire document. And let me see. Give me a second. I'm trying to find a document that I already did. Something I've already printed. So like, for example, this document see how it doesn't go all the way to the edge. My inkjet printer will go all the way to the edge. My laser printer won't. Some laser printers will. So check your settings and see if you can do border, excuse me, borderless printing. But otherwise, this is the printable area. So it's basically saying you're going outside of this printable area. So are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Because it's basically going to force it to print as much as they can on the document. Sorry, knock on my camera. Okay, so we're going to say, so if you hit fix, what it's going to do is it'll change your margins to 0.25, which is, like I said, a quarter of an inch around the whole entire thing. 
we don't want that. We're just going to say ignore. I know what I want to do. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the image that we purchased. So if you go to insert and there's pictures and I'm going to say I want to insert the picture from this device because it is in a folder on my device. And so it's going to take me to my pictures, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to go to OneDrive. I'm going to go to my projects, ignore where I'm going because it's basically I'm just going to the folder where my stuff, my images are re reside. So I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to select, we'll do the first one. So we're going to do number nine of the retro. And so this is the one and it's going to insert the image. And so what it has done is it's fit it as best it can. So it's 12 by 12. So it's doing, you know, my left is over here, my right's over here. So it's fitting it inside of the eight and a half by 11. What I want to do, hello, Ms. S. Anderson. Um, what I want to do though, is I want to fill it all the way. So let me zoom out so you guys can see the entire page. So this is the dot, this is the image right here. And it's just automatically locking it to the top. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab, if you take this and you just drag it down, it's going to kind of um, skew. It's no longer perfectly square. It's kind of skewed it a little bit. So it didn't keep the ratio is what I'm saying. And so what I want to do then in this case is I want to grab one of these corners and I'm just going to make it bigger that way because in Word, then it'll keep the ratio. And so I'm going to go all the way down and let it fill the whole entire page. So it's going to make it bigger and it's going to then also keep, they look like squares. They don't look like rectangles anymore. And so that's all you're going to do. And then what you're going to do from here is you're going to print. So let me show you the printing um, settings that I use on my Canon. So I'm going, I mean, it's as simple as that. You just need to make the, the image as big as you want. And you can also, if I wanted to, I could do four images on this. Um, it's a little bit tricky in Word, but it's doable. But you can literally then just do four panels. You know, I can make this so small, but I, I would almost want to crop it because if I make it small, here, I'll show you. If I make this smaller, it's going to make everything smaller. See how tiny this gets? So sometimes all you want, though, is you just want like a portion of it um, rather than making it that small. So we're going to read. Oh, where's my let's undo, undo. One more undo. No, nope. we're going to redo. OK, we'll do that and we're going to make it big again. And keep in mind that this will get cut off. So you're not going to have perfect squares all the way to the edge. It will get cut off. If you want perfect squares all the way around to the edge, you can try doing a margin and letting the image fit to that margin. Um, but you're still going to probably get stuff that gets cut off. So I usually will put it in here so that it gets cut off all the way around. And then that way it's not like cut off on one side, but not the other, if that makes sense. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about when we print it. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna print. So I'm gonna go to my print settings. So if you go to, I think it's file, I don't do it this way. So file and print, I'll show you the way that, you know, normal people do it, but not my shortcuts. So let me go back. So if you go to file and then print. Okay, so my, printer is the Canon LBP 6230DW. It is a black and white laser printer, monochrome laser printer, prints only black and white or black. And it, um, it does have Wi-Fi. So it's in another room. Let's see. Yeah, my laser printer does that. They are trying not to gum up the rollers. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I think also the inkjets do it because inkjet normally prints on photo paper and photo paper is pretty thick. And so what happens is if you put photo and you can print edge to edge, then you can do a borderless photo print. Um, and because it's photo paper, then it will be thick enough to support a edge to edge borderless print. Whereas I think with a laser printer, it 
can't, you know, it's, I guess they just don't assume because it's not, you're not going to be printing photos on a black and white laser printer. So maybe if you have a color laser printer, it might let you do it. But I think that was the reason why, um, because to go edge to edge on a piece of paper, you start getting to the very edge and you have to make sure that the paper's thick enough that it doesn't like grab with the, the print heads. So I think that's, that's my logic behind it was why, it, why it's limited on my black and white printer. So I'm going to go into printer properties. I'm just going to show you guys these really quick. Like I said, I've already done some screenshots of this and I plan on doing some other um, documentation to support. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Cindy. And so I will just show you really quick what I use for, um, I use for my settings. So I have already created a, I'm getting it in screen. I've already created a profile. So every single time I print with this printer, no matter what paper I print on, it's going to use my foiling rough two um, setting. It's basically my foiling settings because the reason why I do that is because if I forget to come in here and change to the profile where it is my foiling settings and I try and print something on really thick paper, it's going to think it's copy paper and it's settings will be drastically different than if it was a thicker foiling, you know, glossy paper. So what happens then is if I forget and I print something that I'm intended to foil, um, you know, with the foiling settings, it'll come through my printer and the toner will flake and smudge and smear and get all over the inside of my to my printer. And so then what I have to do is I have to clean my printer. I have to do a cleaning, um, cycle through it to in order to get all the stuff out of it. So what I found is if I automatically just, Hey Lee, welcome. Nope. You didn't miss it. So if I create a profile that has the settings I want to use for foiling, and I always print using those settings, no matter what paper I print on, even if it is copy paper, I don't get that fallout. I don't get the mess. I don't have to, you know, then do a printer cleaning. So just want to let you guys know that that's the way I use mine. It works perfect. If I just need to print a document on just plain copy paper, I use this setting. Um, I don't feel like it's using a crap ton of, um, of toner. I definitely have not gone. I've, I could show you the stack of stuff that I've printed for foiling. It's probably almost a ream like 500 pages, but I have not yet had to change my toner. So speaking of toner, some people say that the toner is what matters and you should always use the toner that is made for your manufacturer, like for the printer, like you should always buy Canon toner and so forth or brother toner. And I've found that to not be true. Uh, toner is expensive and buying it, I'll say toner, name brand toner is expensive. And I, even with my inkjet printers, I've always bought aftermarket ink. And so when I got my Canon laser printer, I bought aftermarket laser toner and I've had no issues with it. If you're having issues, it's going to be in your settings and it depends on your computer or your printer. So just, just know that this printer has its own settings that you have to install um, so you can install the printer, but then you also have to install the settings so that you get these settings. Otherwise it uses a totally different settings and, um, you just have to make sure that you have all the options. Um, I do want to show you guys back here. If you look at the document, you can see it's already taking the margin. So as I said, it's going to take that half inch margin all the way around. If you don't like the way it's looking, you can try and skew it, but in word, it's not as easy. So, I'm not going to try and do that in this. I will show you how to do that in Inkscape. So the settings we're going to be using then is, so I'm just going to go through each one here. So this is, um, it's going to be letter. My page size is letter and it's going to be one-sided printing. I don't, I always, this is this, what this profile set to is one-sided printing. So you can set it to two-sided, but I don't recommend it if you're going to be using this setting you know, for everything. I usually will just change the double-sided. If I'm printing a document and I want it double-sided, I'll change it here. Then we're going to go to page setup. And so it's going to be letter, match page size, 
and there's nothing really in here that you're going to change. The profile here is what actually you're going, well, if you change stuff, it's going to ask you to edit. So let me go back to basic settings and let me change this to A4. See how it says change? So it's this boiling rough two has been changed. Um, and so I basically know now that whatever my current profile was is now tweaked. And so it's going to ask me, I can do an ad and it's going to ask me, you know, I can rename it to whatever I want. So as you go through this, make your changes and then save your profile page setup. So we already went here. So make sure it's, you know, orientation is correct, all that stuff finishing. So this is going to be, um, so printing, it's not finishing what you think it's finishing, like the heat setting to seal the toner, um, or cure the toner. This is more of a, you know, is it collated when it comes out? Stuff like that. So this is not something we need to tweak anything in paper source. So this is where you want to change it to. These are my different papers. I've got plain, plain L heavy, a transparency labels, rough one and rough two. So it's basically going from your lightest weight paper to your heaviest weight paper. Now, the heavier the weight, the paper, the longer the finishing time. And it's a matter of seconds. So it's not like your printer is going to take, you know, like an extra long time to spit out your page. It's just basically the higher the heat because your paper is thicker and it has to heat the toner and make sure that it doesn't flake off. And so that is why you would want to use the highest um, the thickest paper. And so some printers say cardstock, something like that. That's definitely what you want. So you want to change it to mine is rough too. And so that's the one I'm selecting. And then you're going to go to quality. Now quality here is all the other settings that you might want to change. I have, uh, it's under other settings because these are general, um, defaults. Like I can select general, I can select publications and it tells you like it's suited best for printed publications that include photo images and graphics or high definition text. This mode is best for suited, best suited for printing originals containing many small characters, stuff like that. If you go into other settings, well, actually, if you go to advanced settings, it's an automatically switch you over to other settings. So if you go to other settings, now here you can look at specifics. And so rendering rate, if I click on this, it's not even something I can change. You may be able to change it, but my printer, you can't change. Resolution, 1200 DPI. This is not what I normally have. Hold on. I'm going to cancel out of this so that you guys can see what my normal settings is. My printer will print 1200 DPI. However, if you see here, this is my, I just went into my foiling rough two. I didn't change anything, but the reason why it changed was because I selected one of these. So I'm going to go into advanced settings again. And so the rendering rate is going to be 24 um, BPP resolution. I have the option of 1200 or 600. I do 600. I don't need 1200 works just fine as 600 half tones. So half tones, you might have to tweak this or look in your, um, printer manual or look online or something to see exactly what these might mean. I cannot tell you what mine means. I did the research and I decided on pattern three and we're leaving it there. <laughs> toner save. I do not want toner save on. I want it off because I want as much toner down as possible. That will make for a better foiled image. Toner density it says do not adjust. So I'm not adjusting that. I want it, whatever I set it to, that's what I want. And then advanced smoothing. Again, you would have to check on your printer. Um, smooth one, smooth two. I have it on smooth one. Seems to work fine. If it's not working, something's not right. Come in here and tweak one of these and then print it again and see if it, if it helps. Just keep in mind, if you print something through your laser printer and the toner flakes and it's all over smudged on your document, you have to do a cleaning. Highly recommend doing a couple. It's basically my printer specifically. You have to come into the settings for the printer and you do it. You start it from the computer but it'll take a piece of paper and it'll just run it through and it runs the rollers over it really hard and like literally in dense, it almost like embosses the paper with the rollers. And so it goes through and it'll go through once 
and I would highly recommend putting it through another time, do another clean, and then print whatever you're trying to print, like this document here, print it using just plain copy paper so that you don't waste some of your nice Himilco glossy paper. So that way you can, um, yeah, you don't have, you don't waste paper. And then if it comes through and it has no smudges, no, you know, a fallout from the toner, then you're good to go. I just highly recommend make sure you just print your image using copy paper so that it doesn't um, have issues and you, you don't waste paper. All right. And then density fine adjustment. This isn't even an option for me to change. And so that's, I don't. So this is what mine show. Okay, so I'm going to just hit cancel because I don't want to change anything. My foiling rough two is what I want. And so I'm going to hit okay. Now, like I said, you will come in here and you will change those properties. You're going to save them as a, a as a profile. Now there is a way and I got to look it up because I can't remember how, but this profile isn't always the first one that shows up you have to, like, it'll be foiling full letter or something like that. Um, sorry, my speakerphone turned on for some weird reason. Um, Okay, had some like notifications going, don't know why. Okay, so what you'll have to do though is once you create the profile, it doesn't set the profile as your default when you go and print. So there is a way to do this. I will look it up. I cannot remember how to do it, but every single time I print now, it goes to this. So just because you've set this, still you need to do one more step and you need to come in here and you need to change the profile from whatever your default profile is to your foiling profile. Um, like I said, I have it set so that all I have to do is literally just hit print no matter whenever I want to print and I don't have to go in there and select that profile. So I will show you guys how to do that. Give me a second. My live. Okay. Live chat. Be sure to turn on live chat and give me a thumbs up if you're liking what I'm sharing. Okay. So I'm going to hit print. And this is going to go print and it's going to give you the error message again about, Hey, your margins are really small. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I want to do this. So it's asking, do you still want to print? I say yes. So now that is going to go print, but it's not going to print anything because my printer's off at the moment. And even if it's not off, the other thing that I do is I don't have paper in it. So I never have paper in my printer because I don't want to accidentally print. It's in another room for one. So when I go and I print something, I'm going to have to get up and go put whatever media, whatever paper I decide to put in there. So I don't even leave plain paper in there because I don't want it printing right now. I want to have the time to get up and go and put whatever print, um, printer paper I want to put in there. So let me show you some printer paper. So the stuff that we use, in the FSC that we found that works the best for white. It's called Himilco and it is the white glossy card cover stock and it comes in a 50 pack and I'll put the links um, down below and then also Chow can link um, Amazon. Nancy has an Amazon shop so you guys can, it's in there. Um, I think it's under foiling category but this is wonderful paper. It looks amazing. This is actually what this is. It's on this, so it's got a little bit of a semi-gloss. It's the same paper that, the, that foilables have been printed on, foil art, stuff like that. This is the same paper. It is double-sided glossy, so when you put it in, you don't have to worry about, oh crap, is it face up, face down? Don't have to worry about it. Just stick it in your printer. The other paper that we use for black, oh, and this is, it's 65 pound, I believe. It doesn't say on my thing. Let me go on my computer really quick because I did have it open. It is 80 pound. I lied. It's 80 pound. You really don't need anything more than 80 pound when you're foiling because honestly, it's going to be used as a layer and your layers on 
65 to 80. So there's really no reason you need more than that, um, like 100 pound. And some printers won't do 100 pound. I think my printer, my Canon, I've tried it. It will not do anything more than 80 pounds. It just won't feed it. Okay, so this is the white that we use. And then we also have, I got some laser, um, laser printer transparency sheets. So this is basically acetate. So we can print our own clear foilables, foil art. And then this was given to me by Nancy. And this is something from the UK. So Lee can speak to this one, but Nancy said this is actually better than the black that we get from um, the US and the black that we get from the US is it's also Himilco it's 80 pound and you can get 100 pack for $25 or 50 pack for $13.95 but you also can probably use this is something from this, what brand is this this is from um, Michaels so this is a 50 uh, excuse me, 50 pack of 65 pound. You can use this. And then I recently did a project for some wedding invitations and I got this really cool Onyx Star Dream collection um, from a vendor on online, but also I think it's available on uh, Amazon in all kinds of different colors. It's a pearlescent looking black. So you can kind of see it's got a shimmer. It's foilable. You can print on this and it'll only foil the image. You have to be careful with some, like a glossy black in order for them to make it glossy. And I'm getting this from Nancy, from what I believe she said. Um, Nancy had said in order to make a glossy black, they put toner over it. And so that's how they get that shiny look. But the problem is, is that when you try and print on it and then only foil the image you printed, it foils the whole entire thing. So you have to be careful with certain papers like that that they'll just foil the whole thing so I have like some foil paper that um you can't print on it and then foil it because it just sticks to the whole thing however I did I told you guys before Michael's had a big old sale on like all these shimmer and pearlescent papers and stuff so I actually got some of those and tried to foil on them and I was like is it gonna stick to the whole thing or what it doesn't it actually works so this is one of the paper packs from Michaels is recollections shimmer paper and pretty shimmer and then what I did was I'll show you guys this is actually my um, Valentine's Day card to my husband so this is what I did and so you can see this is the shimmer paper it's just it's it's a two-tone pack pack it's got a, a light pink or like a lavender I don't know. It's purple hues. So it was purple and a light purple. And so I printed it on the light purple and it foiled beautifully. I love it. And that is 65 pound as well. Again, you don't need anything really thicker than 65 pound. Let me look at some comments. Um, brother color printer. I need a laser printer. Hubby's going to be through. <laughs> Hi June. How are you? Okay. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go put some paper. Um, actually, let me know which, what paper do you guys want? Um, I'll just pick one for this, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to do all of them. I'm going to just do white for this one so you guys can see the white and Milko. And I will be right back. I'm gonna let that print. So let's go to Inkscape. I like this much better. Here's the black Camilco, as I was saying. All right, we're gonna go to Inkscape. Oh, isn't that cute? That's my logo that that uh, Liz made digital for me. She's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go to a new, and then I'm going to. Um, now, the way you do this, the way I do this, I'm going to go to the designs and I'm just going to dry, drag and drop. So we were going to do the Damask. We'll do the Damask. And so it's going to be 
Where's my numbers? Seven, eight, nine. I think it's this one. Ten. Okay. So what I do for this is I drop and drag. So you have the document, you have Inkscape open over here, and you just go to the folder where your images are, and you're just going to click on it, and you're going to drag it into Inkscape. Now, I can do this with all the images. So let me go get number nine, seven, eight. So number nine, and then number 15. Um, 15 and number six. Six. Okay, and then I'm gonna minimize this. And so we are in Inkscape. And you have all the images. So I'm going to do a control A, which is going to select all the images. You can kind of see it's got a bunch of different little dotted lines. And then I'm going to click this lock button, which is going to lock my aspect ratio. And then I'm going to go in here and just manually, because I don't want to try and find like a corner over here to grab. So I'm going to just manually take this and I'm going to bring them down to, let's just do um, 11. And so then it's going to make all of them smaller. And then what I can do is with Inkscape, whatever is on your desktop or your, I forget what it's called, but I'll show you here. My page, is that the word I'm looking for? I got to find it. Give me a sec. I'm trying to find my page. Hello, where are you? I lost my page. This is funny. Okay, there it is. <laughs> okay, let's zoom in. Scroll down. Zoom in. Move over. Okay, so here's the page. It just got real funky because I made all these come in and they were big and yeah. All right, so this is your page. So what, if I were to hit print right now, it would print a blank page because there's nothing on my page. So the only thing that's going to print is whatever I put on my page. So if I literally do this, it's going to print that, but it's only gonna print the size of my page as well. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to move over so that that's more center. There you go. So you can see the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to put this over it and then I'm going to grab one of the corners and I'm going to cover my page just like that. I can kind of move it over a little bit more centered. Um, you can also make it, you know, exactly that size. So, but it is 12 by 12. So it's going to keep it in a square. If you change it to eight and a half by 11, it's going to skew your image a little bit. Now, I'm going to print. And so I'm just going to hit print. And like I said, my preferences are already on the foiling rough too. So I don't need to change anything. Um, and then I'm going to hit print. So it's going to print that for me. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to move this out of the way and I'm going to go grab, let me grab all of these so I can get them more close. Zoom in. And now, yeah, it's out of paper because I only put one piece of paper in there and that's totally fine. So I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm going to do the same thing with, oops, let's grab it all. And let's just do one. I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to make this big and I'm going to print. And move that one out of the way. And you guys see what I'm doing. And I'm going to make that big and I'm going to print. And the last one. And print. Okay, I'm gonna turn my mink on so that I can start heating up. And I'm going to grab some, I'm gonna do a transparency. I'm grabbing some paper over here to do. It's in the packaging, it hasn't been opened yet. I literally just got it from Amazon today. I thought I had these. I literally spent like a couple hours looking through my whole entire classroom for those transparency sheets. I didn't have them. They were never, I, I bought inkjet ones. I never bought transparency um, laser printed ones. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, let's see. Turn on my mink. 
I always go start with four. The and I'll show you guys the make here in a second. So I'm gonna swing my camera around. Sorry, trying to figure out how to do this to show you guys the mink. So let me um, switch this and then we're going to, there we go. Sorry, it's flipping out of my... There we go. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's the transparency film, just clear. It's very thin. It's four mil, so really, I think, and it's for laser printers, so you don't want to do something that's inkjet because it has, it has to be heat safe, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go throw that one in there, um, and then I have a black and maybe even do another white. I think that's what I'll do. Oh, and here I found. Actually, I wonder if this is the damask. It is. Ha, ha, ha. This is the damask, so I don't have to print that one even though I did. So that's that one. And then I also printed it in black so we can see what that looks like on black. And then this is what happens when you print it in Word and you use it skews. So you can see that it's not exactly, but who knows, maybe you like that better. So, all right, I'll be right back. I'm going to put my stuff in the printer. I really like the transparency. I'm gonna go do another one of those. I think that looks pretty cool. So. <clears throat> and my printer will just sit there and wait until I hit the paper button. Um, okay, green light on the mink. So this is the big mama mink. It's not the mini mink, it's the big one. It's got an opening, I think it's like 12 and a half inches wide. Let's see, it's gonna fit 12 by 12 paper. So it is um, 12 and three quarters inches wide. I like it because I can use it. It's basically, basically replaced my laminator. So I don't need to um, bring out my laminate if I want to laminate an actual document or something like that. Okay. If you guys have any questions or want to see something specific, let me know. I probably won't be able to do it today, but, um, for another video, it's always good to know. Okay. I'm going to cut this down because I don't want to do the whole entire thing. I just want to show you guys, like if I wanted to do a card front, I'm going to cut this down. So the Big Mama Mink, um, I usually start at a four. If it's thicker paper, so if it gets up to like a 80 maybe, then I will use bigger, um, higher numbers. This is the carrier sheet that comes with the mink. You can buy them replacements. This one is dirty. It's not going to affect anything I'm doing. Oh, well, actually it might because this is acetate or uh, transparency. So let's get a clean one. The way you clean that though is you're going to use acetone. Not nail polish remover because that has like lotions and moisturizers in them usually. Um, so you want to use just pure acetone with a cotton ball or paper towel or something. All right we are going to dusty dusty with our fancy little 
makeup brush. Now, this you should be able to feel. First of all, your toner should not flake. Your toner, when it comes out of the toner uh, with the laser printer, you should be able to touch it right off the bat because it's already gone through the process. It's not like an inkjet where it has to like dry. It should automatically be good. It should be good to go. If it's not, then your finishing um, is not correct. And you need to either turn it up to a higher, thicker paper so that it finishes at a higher temperature or whatever it does for paper that's thicker. So it shouldn't flake off and which it doesn't. And like I said, you don't have to worry about it when it, when it comes straight out of the, the printer. It's good to go. I love the larger mink. Yes. I love the larger mink because I don't have to worry about, I can do my eight and a half by 11s. You know, I can do this whole darn page if I wanted to. Um, I don't recommend doing a large page like that though, because the larger the surface area that you're trying to foil, the foil sometimes will shift and you can get creases and it won't foil perfectly. Like, you know, the foiling snobs club likes it to be. Okay. With acetate or transparency, you can feel the toner. One side's smooth, one side's not. That's I'm letting you know that because on a piece of paper, obviously you know what front and back is. This is clear. So you can feel the toner on the, the acetate. That is the side that we're going to foil. So I'm going to use this. I have this pretty cloud and I'm going to pull down my and I'm probably gonna use this foil for all of them and so it is four and a quarter by eight, five and a half so we're just gonna go a little over cut it and we're going to dusty dusty uh, dust is the enemy of foiling any piece of dust that lays on this the foil will not stick because there's dust in between the foil and the toner the toner on here is basically plastic. So when I put it through my mink, it's going to reheat it and you and melt, and then the toner will stick to that, or excuse me, the foil will stick to that. So you wanna make sure that you dust off the, whatever you're foiling, and then also the foil. And then I'm going to put it on the carrier sheet, and I'm gonna send it through. I'll pull it away so that it comes out the other side. Okay, while we're waiting that, um, let's do, I'll do one of the black ones. I love foiling on black cardstock. It's just such a different look. It's pretty cool. I'm going to cut this down. Card front size. I think it's funny because this is my newest um, temperature sensitive nail polish and it is um, cold my fingers are cold because that's the dark color that comes out when my fingers are cold or when the polish is cold otherwise it's like a gold they're really pretty though um, okay so next dusty dusty cut me some foil I should probably just cut a few of these once it's foiled or once it's gone through the mink you want to just let it cool don't try and peel it right away because unlike the printer this actually can still be you know it needs a little bit of a cooling time to solidify um, so yeah just make sure that you don't reveal right away. Okay, we got all that. And then we're going to get, let's see, we did that one. I have this one. You can also make a toner sheet, which would basically be just a full page you wouldn't do it on black obviously because that would be a waste of paper but like on well I guess you could do it on black um, because if you did it on white it, that would be a waste of paper you're not going to see anything so 
Uh, if you wanted to do a toner sheet, what you do is you just basically do the same thing with the images that I showed you, but instead of it being an actual black and white image, you're going to just take like a square box or a rectangle and you're going to fill the whole entire page with that box or rectangle and print. And you're just going to print a big black box and then you can, um, hot foil or not hot foil, toner foil the page. And I highly recommend if you're going to use it for die cuts or something like that to foil it first and then put it through your die cut machine because the die cut will leave um, little slopes around the edges of the image and that is not what you want. I'm looking for my other ones and they're on the printer. Be right back. This one turned out cool. I'm really liking these transparency sheets. It's going to be interesting trying to add them to a card of some sorts. But we will, we will see. I guess I will have to make some cards out of these and then post it to like Instagram and the FSC and stuff. Okay. So we've got all four of them now. I think this is the one we already did. And we did the damask. Okay, so I've got one, two, and then this one. Okay, so we can probably skip that damask. So we already did a damask. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I love. Why make it bigger than the card? What? It, why make what, Jean? Um, sorry, Bonnie. Cutting the foil a little larger than the card allows for wiggle room and the pressure of the mink will cause very slight. Yes, thank you. If, that, if that's what Bonnie was asking about, why make it bigger than the card? So why am I making this bigger than this? Because I want to make sure that, yes, if it does shift um, as it's going through or before it you know, starts heating, that it's going to still have some wiggle room. And then also it shrinks a tiny bit. So you want to make sure that you just give it a little bit. And then the other thing too, is that once you can actually foil, use the waste foil as we call it. And so if you have a bigger piece, then it'll cover, you can make a full size card front rather than, you know, I'm going to have to cut this down to a mat so you can actually use it as a full size uh, mat or full size on front cover of your card. Okay, I'm going to take this out, but I will not review, reveal just yet. It's still warm. Oh, because it's sitting on here. <laughs> Silly me. Okay, dusty, dusty. Oh, let me make sure. Yep. So I'm going to foil that. And I'll line that up. Put that through. And I put it off to the side because if, when, I can do two of them side by side. Um, as that one's going through, I can feed another one when it's halfway because it'll just tiny, tiny, tiny. It'll have a tiny overlap. Okay, so let's do this one. You guys are going to see how black pops when it's foiled. It's so cool looking. And I can use this carrier sheet because I don't care if any of the toner transfers um, to my card because you won't see it. And that's what will happen is it these smudges will reheat and then they will transfer possibly to your project. So I'm actually going to go over here because I've got cords in the way over there. Okay. And you can peek at your design um, at the foiling and see, because like I said, I'm using a four. I'm using the level four. And if for some reason it didn't foil very well and I peeked at it, then you can put it back together and stick it back through. Um, maybe turn up the heat if you think that might have been the issue. Um, some people will use a shim. I've never had to use a shim. A lot of the times if something doesn't foil very well, it's also could be because of the paper you're using. What setting am I using? I'm using the four 
on my Mama Mink, if that's the setting you're asking about, Susie. Okay. Oh, didn't put that one through. Okay, so now these are cool. This one's definitely coolest. So let us do our reveal. This is what we call foil porn. So it didn't foil. I'll have to look here in a second. It doesn't look like it foiled 100%, but it's pretty darn good. It's actually really good. This is the first time I've used this transparency sheet, so it's hard to see because of lights and stuff. But you can see there's a little bit of, there's black here. There's a little bit of black here on the edges. I think this, because it's really thin, this feels like copy paper. This probably could have used a shim. So just FYI. But also, let me show you something. There's a lot of flaking going on, but that's okay. The reason why is because when you have really tight designs, like you can see, you guys see, you see where the foil is, but then that's black. So the foil's not sticking there. There's actually, the design overfoiled, but it's just stuck there. So actually I think my black, the black I was seeing is a lot of it's going away. Let me do this over the trash so I can get this so you guys can see it. Oh, I got little flakies all over the place now. And it's like staticky. Yeah, that didn't turn out terrible, but I've got a lot of fallout that's like sticking where I don't want it to, and I don't know if I can get rid of that. It's very staticky. I'm like, got, I got little bits and particles flying all over the place. So like here, it's kind of stuck to itself. However, if I wet it and wipe it down, it seems to be coming off. So a little bit of a learning curve on that. That's the first time I ever used that. So that's pretty cool. Okay. And you can't really use the waste foil on this one because of how it grabbed with those finer designs. I mean, you could, it's just not going to be the exact image that it's supposed to be, but, and that's another thing that a toner sheet's good for is you can lay these down. Okay. So here's my black. And this is almost 100%. Possibly could go higher heat. So then there's a couple little areas you can see here that didn't boil perfectly. But it's pretty darn good. And then you can see that it didn't boil 100% because you can see some of the, like right there, where it should be clear, but there's a tiny bit of foil left on there. So this one definitely is um, a cool little waste foil to use. And then we have another black. A lot of texture on this one. I think I realized I have to, I should go higher on these, but it's still pretty cool. Mostly I'm just trying to show you guys how to download, um, extract, print, these so that you can do them on your own. And then you've got, this is another, ooh, that one turned out pretty cool. That looks really, really good. I like that damask. I love that cloud, the blue cloud. Gorgeous. Um, yes, I'm using a stencil brush. It's the stiff scrapbook.com stencil brush. I don't like using it for stenciled or ink. So I literally, it's a nice stiff brush. It's got a bunch of foil on the tip of it now. I would never use this one because this is dusty dusty and you don't want 
to get anything on this one. And now that I'm looking at it, it may have gotten some stuff in it. <laughs> but you're going to use this one for dusty, dusty, getting dust off your foil and your um, foilable or foil art. And that's all you're going to use it for. Keep it away from glitter. Keep it away from embossing powder, etc. Let's see. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. Well, I mean, I pretty much did. I can show you guys. I'll pull out. Hold on. I have. Oh, and also, if you don't want to, and I didn't do it um, today, obviously, but you can buy. Decafoil has clear toner sheets. And so this is essentially the same thing as the transparency sheet that I was using. But let me see on the thickness. I'm curious to see how thick it is. Nope, it's the same thickness. It feels the same. I don't know if it'll have the mill on here or not, but um, yeah. So if you want, although I think I spent $14 and I got a pack of 100 of the laser printer transparency sheets. So this is much more cost effective than buying these. But I'm going to grab a toner sheet. You can also buy um, solid, solid toner sheets from Decofoil. So these are the solid toner sheets. It's basically just a whole page of toner. So you could foil this whole entire thing and then, or you can just cut out a piece, um, you know, and then foil it and die cut it. You don't have to do the whole thing. But I'm trying to find my homemade toner sheets. There they are. So as I said, these aren't perfect because they actually have, oh, this one's good. I already used a piece of it though. I cut it off, but this is literally all I did. You put a square, a black box on your Inkscape, or you could do it in Word too, and then you just print it. And this is very thin. Yes, very thin paper. So let's go ahead and do this waste foil. And then we'll be done. And then I am going to be taking a break here and I will be back though. I think, what time is it? It's 2.40 it's right now. Um, like around 4, 4.30, I'm going to do another live because I have a new toy that I, I upgraded one of my toys. Let me just say that. Let me do this side. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So... I will come back later and then Ryan is going to be doing a live at eight o'clock tonight on his channel. Okay. So dusty, dusty, and you can see it's not perfect. There's actually a couple of white dots down here, so that won't adhere, but that's fine. I'm just showing you guys how to do this. We're going to, so now everything on here that has foil is going to stick to this toner. Um, move it over to the edge because that's where I have. And I need to find one of my carrier sheets. Um, they do have carrier sheets. The, the big mink actually comes with a 12 by 12 big mama carrier sheet. So for, you know, uh, eight and a half by 11 papers, 12 by 12 papers, that's great. But then also I ordered, you know, the small ones because it takes forever for that big one to go through. Keep that in mind. Um, but you also can use parchment paper um, or a piece of like copy paper if you really, really needed to. Let's see. I don't know what you're talking about, Cindy. Don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to move some stuff on my desk. I'm going to move some stuff away. Got stuff piling up here. All right. So this is... So this is on the black toner sheet. Now, with this... 
just wait, you'll see. Okay, I'm just waiting for it to cool. All right, so now you can see there's all your waste foils gone, and now it's on here. Now keep in mind, this is where we call the infinity foiling problem. Because now what I can do is I can take another piece of foil. Do I have a piece of foil out? If I do, I'm going to use it. Nope, don't. But you can take another piece of foil and you can lay it over and you can foil, put this through again because this is toner showing. And so you can put like a different color foil. You can do black, you can do white, you can do whatever you want. You can just leave it if for all I care. It doesn't matter. But what you do then is that when you peel it off, you're going to have the damask design again and you can then use that one again to foil so you have infinity foiling <laughs> it's june i don't know what you're talking about okay that's all i have for you guys let me flip my camera around hello so that's all i have um i thought i would just show you guys some cool designs that I got off Etsy. Be sure to check out um, Elizabeth's Etsy channel too. I will update the links of stuff. Uh, most likely I'll just link Nancy's Amazon shop for like the papers and stuff because those are in the section for foiling um, and paper, I think. So those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what else. If you guys want me to link something else let me know but otherwise that's all I got and leave your comments below if you want me to do a video on anything else or have any questions about stuff and I'll get back to you guys just reading comments it's good to see you guys too thank you if you liked it please thumbs up if you are not subscribed please do so and make sure you check the bell and select all so that you get notified when I go live and yeah, be sure to watch it with the chat on because otherwise you don't know what I'm answering people's questions. Any scan and cut videos you want to do would be great. All right, I'm working on those. So, okay, good night, everybody. I will see you in a couple hours or so. So, have a good night. Bye.